In this lab, you'll be studying the reaction that occurs during the browning of fruits and vegetables. This is the reaction between catechol and molecular oxygen to form water and 1,2-benzoquinone. Benzoquinone um, shows up in the visible spectrum, so we'll be using the UV visible spectrometer to monitor this reaction. When you get to lab, the first thing you should do is turn on the UV vis spectrometer. Then you'll want to go over to the computer and turn on the instrument online software. So when the dialog box prompting the operator name and password comes up, you can click cancel and wait for the software to load. When it's loaded, um, go to instrument and then click on lamps and make sure that both the deuterium lamp and the tungsten lamp are turned on and click OK. You'll want to wait at least eight minutes before you take a sample um, spectrum to let the lamps warm up. So next you'll need to prepare your catechol solution which is the substrate for this reaction and follow the instructions in your lab manual to do that. And then you'll need to prepare the apple enzyme solution. So peel the apple and then cut it up and put it in the blender with 200 mils of ice and water and then blend that until it is smooth. Now that you've pureed the apple and ice water solution, we're ready to pour it. Um, so we'll want to filter it through a cheesecloth. So just put the cheesecloth in a beaker and then you'll want to pour this apple solution in there. And then it might not go through very easily, so you might have to um, kind of squeeze the cheesecloth. So just kind of make a ball and then like squeeze it until the puree comes out. And then pour this into an Erlenmeyer flask and take it over to the hood where you will keep it on ice and bubble a nitrogen through it to reduce exposure to oxygen. You can put the pipette tip that's connected to the nitrogen line in the apple catechylase solution and then turn the nitrogen gas on to bubble nitrogen through the solution. And this will reduce the exposure to molecular oxygen and prevent our solution from browning. So at the bottom left hand corner of the software, you'll see kinetics. Click on kinetics and you'll note that a different mode will load. Um, at this point, you'll want to make sure that you have already adequately warmed up the lamps and uh, set both the tungsten and deuterium lamps to the on position in the software. So prior to taking a blank in this mode, the first thing you'll want to do is set up time and calculation up towards the top of the screen here. Once you've opened the time and calculation parameters dialog here, you'll see that you can input a number of wavelengths. We'll only need one in this case, and that is the 540 nanometers that is listed in your lab manual. You'll also need to set up the timing, which is further down to the left. You want to set the run time to 300 seconds or five minutes, which should be more than enough data. And you'll want to set the cycle time to one second. So a new spectrum is taken every one second. It's essentially the sampling frequency. All the other parameters can remain the same. The scaling from zero to one uh, absorption units is fine given the materials and you can click OK to set up. Notice in the results section you have the wavelength set to 540 nanometers and there'll be a rate and standard deviation column as well. At this point you're set to take the blank which you can go ahead and do if you have not already done so. I want to take the blank spectrum. So fill the cuvette with DI water and wipe the outsides with a Kim wipe to remove all fingerprints and oils. And then place it inside, inside the sample compartment chamber and press the arm down to lock it into place. Okay, so to collect the blank spectrum, just click on the blank button and that will collect. You'll want to click on time-based measurement and you'll be prompted to create an autosave file. You want to name this something appropriate to the experiment. 
We want to store it in C, users, public, documents, and for example, physical measurements 2015, and name it something appropriate, such as Apple Enzyme Kinetics Uninhibited. And the file type is a time-based spectra type file, which is appropriate given the method. You'll be prompted that the shutter will remain open during the entire time due to the nature of the measurement, the, the sampling frequency. You can click OK to accept that. Now we're ready to collect the data. To prepare the cuvette for the sample collection, you'll want to put the appropriate amounts of water and catechol in the cuvette. Have your partner get the apple enzyme solution from the hood, and then you can put that into the cuvette as well. Then put the cuvette into the sample chamber. But instead of just taking a sample, you'll need to wait five minutes for it to equal the rate to room temperature. So you can use a stopwatch to do that. As soon as this has been accomplished, you can press start to start collecting spectra. And what you'll notice here is you have the time trace at the top, which is absorbance versus time, the absorbance being at this particular wavelength at 540 nanometers. Of course, this, this sample is just water for the purposes of this demonstration, so you can see the black line populating uh, at roughly zero, which is what we would expect. And we have the sample spectra on the bottom here, which will populate with the spectrum as it evolves with absorbance versus wavelength, as you would see in the typical standard mode. So we will let this evolve and show how this ends up once a sample has been fully taken. Once the, the measurement is done being taken, you will see a detailed view of the time trace, the absorbance versus time here in seconds. And you will, able, you will be able to export this data as a CSV file by clicking on the data, which you'll highlight down here, going to File, going to Export Selected Data As, and going to CSV Format, and clicking CSV Format. You'll want to choose the file format as CSV, and you'll want to look at the path. And at the very end, the path should already be set to the appropriate location. At the very end, you can name the particular trial. So in this case, we can pretend that this is simply a control. Let's say it's a control without enzyme. And we can click Save Spectra. And it is now exported as a CSV. So to take the next measurement, all you need to do is, once you have reset up your cuvette and everything, you can click on time-based measurement again. You can click on change file name. And name it whatever is most descriptive to the particular trial you are doing if you so wish. So let's say at this point you are now naming it 
trial one. You will be prompted again that the shutter will remain open the entire time. Click OK. And once you have added the enzyme to initiate the reaction, you or your partner can click Start, and the process will repeat itself. So on the second part of this experiment, you'll need to choose an inhibitor, and then prepare 50 milliliters of that solution, and then use the same type of apple that you use on day one to prepare the enzyme catechylase solution. Collect the blank, and then collect kinetic data using the volume of substrate over the center of the linear portion of the lineweaver burke plot. You'll need to make sure that you have different inhibitor concentrations so that you're able to monitor the progression of the reaction, which should be noticeably slower than the uninhibited rate. After you've completed the experiment, make sure that um, all the waste is properly disposed of in the appropriate containers. The apple puree can go down the sink, but everything else should be in the labeled waste. When you leave the lab, make sure that you turn off the UV-Vis spectrometer and log out of the computer.